Hi, I'm Lisa Rangel with Chameleon Resumes. We are the premier executive resume writing services company. And I'm here with you today because I wanna talk about salary negotiations. I wanna give you three reasons why you should always negotiate your salary, whether it's for promotion or whether it's with a new job. And, and even more so if you're afraid, they're gonna say no. You know, I, I don't, you gotta go through the fear. But I'm gonna give you three reasons why. And you know, it's so important for someone, anyone at any level, staff, professional, or executive level, to really learn and master the skill of salary negotiation. Because, you know, frankly, you just shouldn't leave money on the table. You know, 401k contributions are based off of a percentage of your salary. Um, you know, so you can contribute more if your salary is higher. Um, you know, companies may match that. So that's obviously more money that you can you can gather for yourself through the match if your salary is higher. You know, future raises then are based on higher salaries. You know, so it's important for individuals to learn how to do this early and often. And again, it could be whether it's a new job or going for a promotion or at a performance evaluation for your current job. You know, always being able to negotiate salary, negotiate your compensation, your total package is really, really important. So, so that's why I want to give you three reasons why you should do this. Um, the first is, you know, frankly, your employer is expecting it. Um, when, when someone accepts the offer on the first time, you know, it, it can sometimes send a message that you're willing to take the lower offer. You know, very few employers do the right thing and offer the highest they can do right from the start or, you know, offer market rate right from the start. Very, very few employers do that. Most are going to you know get away with the the, the smallest salary they, they can get away with um hoping you say yes you know smallest that and still keep you happy obviously at least they're smart right they should want to keep you happy but um and maybe go to the lower end of the range so you know your employer is expecting it you know you have to want to want it and that's what most employers want to see and you know you're you can't ask you can't get what you don't ask for so, you know, if whatever offer you're given on the first shot, I, I always encourage individuals to, to negotiate the salary, go back with a counter offer and, and really, you know, show that you think you're worth it. You know, even if they were to say no, they know you're going to ask. And I think that's important. Um, the second reason is, you know, it's almost, and this is more specifically, I think, for individuals in sales and marketing or business development or any sort of revenue generating type of role. I think it's even doubly important for these types of professionals, executives, for these types of individuals to negotiate their salary. I mean, this is an opportunity for your potential employer or your current employer, if you're going for a promotion, where they can see you in action. You know, they can see how you're going to negotiate on their behalf with, you know, vendors, with clients, with, you know, uh, prospective clients. So it's really important if you are in that type of role or a leadership role of any, of any um, profession to really show that you know how to negotiate. Let them, you know, reinforce their decision why they're hiring you by letting them see you in action and see how you're going to conduct yourself when you are negotiating on their behalf in the scope of your job. So again, second part, uh, second reason is because it gives you the opportunity for your employer to see you in action. Um, and, and the third reason, and frankly, I think this is almost the most important reason, you know, um, you know, the reasons I gave earlier about, you know, raises are based on a higher salary and, uh, you know, foreign Ks are based on higher salary. Those are obviously all important. But I think the third reason why you should always negotiate because it is because I'm going to tell you, if you don't, this is going to gnaw at you. You know, I can't tell you how many times a month I have individuals that um, ask me through LinkedIn or, or just, um, you know, other forums where, you know, I, I share information and, and, and help individuals on social media where I get the question, you know, I accepted an offer. It was the first offer they gave me and I just accepted it. And now three, six, nine months later, I can see that like the job is bigger than I thought it was, um, you know, or, or even if it's not bigger than you thought it was that you, you know, they come to me and they say, I realize I should have negotiated. And I realize now I left money on the table. 
Or you may have found out your coworker who's at the same level you are is making more than you are because they asked and you didn't. And so, you know, then I get the question, can I now at three, six, nine months later, ask for a raise? You know, and that's a difficult position to be in. And the answer to that question really varies per person and the scenario. But, it, you know, that whole predicament can be avoided if you just simply negotiate at the time of the promotion, the time of the performance evaluation, or the time of the offer. You know, and, and that is the key. You know, so you can, you know, there is always an opportunity, well, not always, there is sometimes an opportunity to backpedal at month three, six, nine. Um, you know, but again, that option doesn't exist for everybody. It really depends on the situation, but you can avoid it entirely if you simply ask from the beginning. And, you know, even again, even if they say no, right, it won't gnaw you that you didn't ask, you know, so you need to, for your own mental preservation, that it won't gnaw at you later. You need to be able to ask and, and negotiate from the onset. Um, but, you know, I also want to share with you, there's actually one very rare scenario that you may not, you may choose not to negotiate and it would be okay. We actually had a situation happen with a client about a year ago where, um, and I'm not, I'm going to leave all identifying factors about this person just for the sake of his uh, confidentiality, but you know, he was going in for a position asking for 300, 300,000 and he was worth every penny. He had a great background in his chosen field, you know, and, and the whole, the whole nine yards, his skill set was totally on the money for what he was asking for. And when he was extended the offer, he was extended the offer at 500,000. So, you know, he came to us cause he knows we were, we had been preparing that we would always negotiate. And, and he's like, so what do I do? Do I negotiate? And we're like, you know what, if you're really thrilled with the offer, it is beyond your expectations and it's a great job, you know, not battle pay where it's a terrible job and that's why they're overpaying you. That is really the only rare scenario where it is going to be okay to not negotiate. You know, if that company put their best foot forward first in good faith and it is well beyond, you know, in this case, almost 60% higher than what this person was expecting. Um, then, you know, and it's a great job and everything else hits the mark. Why not? You know, in good faith, it's okay to say yes on the first time. So that would be the one scenario where it really is okay if you choose to accept a scenario, uh, an offer on the first shot. But you really need to make sure, you know, fast forward yourself six months. You know, if the job is going to be more than you expect or things you didn't even know that you didn't know um, or you know how are you going to feel in three to six months and if the answer is okay because the offer is well beyond what you expected then that's totally fine you know but outside of that sort of rare scenario with some you know real introspection about not only how you're going to feel today but how you're going to feel in three to six months um, outside of that i would say always negotiate you know, let your employer know that you think you're worth it, even if, and, and that they, you're always going to ask even going forward, um, even if they say no, you know, and it, it specifically if you are in a, a revenue generation type of, or a negotiating, you know, type of profession, you know, like say supply chain, logistics, or in revenue, uh, revenue management or business development, sales, marketing, you know, then you need to demonstrate that why they're hiring you and reinforce why they're hiring you because you're gonna be really good at negotiating. Um, and then, you know, and the last reason, again, just to recap, is just so it doesn't gnaw at you, you know, because I'm, I'm telling you, it gnaws at so many people when they don't ask and they accept the offer on the first shot. So, um, so anyway, thank you so much. I have some more tips on how to negotiate in my ebook called Fat Stacks, How to Negotiate salary and compensation and you'll find the link to get that ebook in the description and again if you have questions as always you can always email me at lr at chameleonresumes.com again i'm lisa wrangle with chameleon resumes we are the premier executive resume writing company and i thank you so much for joining me today and i look forward to next time